Hey, 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 <clears throat> allow this guy in Cleveland, Ohio to sell cocaine under their watch. They provided him with all the tools he needed and the protection he needed. And they confiscated money. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy, 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 man. Like everybody got their hands in this drug business, man. So. It's a wild world we live in, wild man. Like I said, ain't gonna hold your time too long. I want y'all to check this 10 minute documentary out. I want you to like, comment, subscribe, man. It's a new page right here. We only have 33 subscribers. Once we get to 100 subscribers, I'm gonna select four people out of that 100. Four people out of the hundred subscribers, and I'm gonna send each of y'all a gift card. It could be fifty dollars on it. It could be twenty five dollars on it. It could be a hundred dollars on it. Depends on how fast we get to them hundred subscribers. So like the content, share the content. We also gonna keep giving our prizes, man. The more and more subscribers we get. The more and more the prize is gonna be. Once we be starting off trying to get to a hundred, after the hundred we gonna do a prize of five hundred, then four thousand. We just gonna keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, man. To get the content out, man. Straight drop TV, man. Y'all ready? We about to drop. On drugs. They used a technique, allegedly, that is so controversial that it split that community wide open. That community is Cleveland, Ohio. And the technique, the tactic you're talking about, turns out to be a man, a man named Arthur Fechner, a local drug dealer there. Mr. Fechner says that he entered into a kind of arrangement with the police, that he would help them hook a bigger fish, his supplier in Miami. But in the meantime, he would continue to sell drugs, a lot of drugs, drugs to the people in a poor black community in Cleveland. We're going to begin at the top of the story with our chief correspondent, Chris Wallace, who spoke with Arthur Fechner. Arthur Fechner speaking for the first time outside court. Somewhere during the time I was in the hospital, I told them the only way there was to raise the money was I'd have to sell the cocaine that I had. Arthur Fechner didn't sell anything while he was under our control. And he certainly did not sell anything with our knowledge consent or anything else and anyone who says that he did is a damn liar that's what they have to say you understand they have to get a story and stick with it because they can't admit that they allowed me to sell drugs for nearly a decade arthur fechner was one of cleveland's biggest drug wholesalers selling an estimated 20 million dollars worth of narcotics before he turned police informant because his undercover role helped put away other major drug dealers he is now in protective isolation at a prison location we agreed to keep secret. Fechner says that while he was a police informant, he sold cocaine out of this house on Woodland Avenue in one of Cleveland's poorest areas. Right across the street over there, a prime market for his drugs, a public housing project. And in a charge that has rocked Cleveland for the last four years, Fechner says the police knew he was selling the drugs and helped him do it. it to them, the sale of drugs was not a sale of drugs. It was just a, a business like if I was running a convenient supermarket. Fechner says police allowed him to sell drugs because they used the money to finance an undercover sting, which turned into the biggest drug bust in Ohio history. How much more? Oh, but how much for a half a gram? A half a gram is just 25. A good coke? Yeah. But blacks who live in Cleveland's drug war zones are still staggered at the idea that whatever the reason, police would condone drug sales in their neighborhoods. They sold so much of it in our community. It affected almost every family in this community. Fechner's career as a police informant began at this Cleveland warehouse in April 1985. Police found him beaten, drugged, and near death. They also found evidence of a major cocaine operation. Within days, Fechner was visited at the hospital by members of the police narcotics unit, 
who called themselves the A-Team, including Joseph Laub and James Linsky. They had questions and made Fechner an offer he couldn't refuse. We threatened him with everything. We were going to put him in jail, take his, put his wife in jail, or his common-law wife and so forth. And he said, OK, OK, it didn't make any difference to him. And we threatened to take his children away. That's when the man says he'll cooperate. He loves those kids. According to Fechner, the leader of the A-Team, Sergeant James Bistricki, was very specific about what police wanted. An undercover sting that would trap Fechner's Miami supplier, along with 50 kilos of cocaine. And police wanted the sting pulled off fast, in less than two months before a national drug enforcement convention. Did Bistricki indicate he thought that this would be good PR and maybe you could get this bust in time for the DEA convention? There was some talk to that effect, yes. I think it was just the fact that it was going to be a big bust and they could probably go down there and brag about it a little bit. But Fechner had a problem. He says he told Bistricki he owed his supplier, Jose Munoz, a half million dollars. And before Fechner could order more drugs, he had to pay that off. I said the only way I could raise money was to uh, sell the cocaine. And he said, well, you just have to do what you have to do, that's all. So you laid it out flat. The only way to raise this money was sell the drugs, and he was giving you approval. Uh, yes. Fechner says he set up shop at the house on Woodland Avenue, and that the A-team told other police to stay away so he could sell his cocaine. How much in drugs were you selling at that? Um, like I said, it average anywhere from 12000 up to $30,000 a day, depending on what kind of business we've done that day. Now, here you are doing a big business, half a million dollars in a couple of months, with the support, the cooperation, even the protection of the Cleveland police. What's going through your mind? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping everything works out fine because I, I'm trying to do everything I can to please them and everything they ask me to do, I do. Fechner said the way he was going to get the money was to sell drugs and that you approved it. Wrong, no. He said that he'd have to collect past debts to pay off that so he can get more drugs sent up. But the strongest evidence the police must have known about Fechner's drug sales comes from the police themselves. Undercover tapes the A-team made with its informant, including this conversation Fechner had with his partner, Leonard Brooks, about setting up the Woodland Avenue drug operation. What we got to do is we got to move a lot of this stuff fast. Yeah. You know, they want this money quick, right? So the big thing is to get as many people moving as you can right. and get as much merchandise moved as we can in a hurry. Incredible as it may seem, police say they didn't listen to this or dozens of other conversations they recorded. But in one tape, Detective Linsky himself is heard asking whether Fechner's partner has any more drugs to sell. Did uh, Leonard get a hold of you? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. Are you supposed to what, have 75000 cash right now? Yeah. And did he say how much merchandise he had? No. When you were asked about merchandise, what did that mean to you? It meant cocaine. You're asking whether Brooks still has enough merchandise. Clearly, you thought there were going to be more drug sales. In the realm of possibility, there may have been more drug sales. I mean, it, it, it may eat at you, but you have to stand back and let somebody continue their operation until you have the whole picture. In July of 1985, members of the A-Team stuffed $452,000 in cash they got from Fechner into a hidden compartment of this pickup truck Fechner used to carry drugs and money. And the next day, Jose Munoz, the supplier, came to pick it up. Well, he took it back and, and put it back into the, uh, into the mainstream of the drug operations in Miami again. And was that money ever recovered? No, none of it. They've broken all procedures that have been established in the narcotics unit for years. Tom Nealon is a former member of the AT who left the unit before Fechner started selling drugs here on Woodland Avenue. He says his colleagues violated a cardinal rule of law enforcement. You never let the drugs or money get away. What, what's the most money you've ever heard of allowing to walk? Oh, sometimes you'll let, in the city of Cleveland, it's different in different cities, but in Cleveland, maybe $2,000. They might let walk. What about half a million dollars? Never. It's never been done. But when the sting was announced in September of 85, no one was talking about the half million dollars. The police showed off the 46 kilos that had been seized and the people who had been charged, including Jose Munoz. And within months, Howard Rudolph, head of narcotics, was named chief of police by Mayor George Voinovich, who called the undercover operation innovative. But the triumph was short-lived.
federal agents arrested Fechner on another drug charge. And he then told investigators how he financed the police sting. The Cleveland police say that everything you've told me up to this point is a lot. Mm -hmm. that, that you weren't doing any drug sales, they never knew about any drug sales, they didn't know about Woodland Avenue. They say you're a liar. Well, you know, I, I took two lie detector tests. I don't know if you're uh, aware of that. Uh, they were asked to take a lie detector test and they wouldn't take them. Not only did Fechner take two tests, he passed both of them. Last December, five members of the A-team went on trial for participating in drug sales. The prosecution's star witness, Arthur Fechner. Now, I think, would you point Sergeant Bistricki out, please? Uh, he's the gentleman sitting at the end of the table there. But in a controversial decision, the judge acquitted the police for lack of evidence and then ruled that even if the officers had helped sell drugs, as part of a sting, that would be legal. For weeks, there were demonstrations at City Hall, some blacks charging cover-up and saying it was now open season for police to sell drugs in their neighborhoods. It's a black, it's a white issue, it's a poor people's issue, it's a rich people's issue, it's a plague that's on all of us. Feeling the political heat, Mayor Voinovich flip-flopped saying it appeared the police had broken the law. We will not use money from any drug sales, whatever, for anything in terms of that, because that's period, that's out the door, period, nothing. And last month, the mayor suspended police chief Rudolph for failing to supervise the AT. So, four years after the biggest drug bust in Ohio history, the Fechner case is still being played out. Members of the A-team say it has wrecked their lives. It's destroyed my family, it cost me my wife, it cost my children and their mother we got divorced because of this case, the pressures of the case. It hurt. I came on this job with a good name, and I lost that name. They took it away. And I want to get it back. As for Fechner, he'll be in prison for at least three more years. Plenty of time to reflect on the furor his case has raised in Cleveland and decide with those blacks who believe he would never have been allowed to sell drugs in a white neighborhood. I don't believe that if the sales were occurring in uh, maybe Mayor Varnovich's neighborhood or Sergeant Bastricki's neighborhood, that they would allow it to go on.